Hello guys, we are back with our next set of video lecture series. In this series, we are going to start the subject compiler construction guys. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that we need to understand before going into the subject is nothing but the basic terminology guys. So in this lecture, we'll be discussing about the translator and the compiler. We'll be going through their definitions with some examples guys. And we will also discuss about the types of compilers. Okay. Okay. So basically, first of all, let us go through translator. So basically translator is nothing but in simple words you can say so if you go to some other place you will be searching for a translator right so basically he'll be taking an input of our language and he'll be giving the output of that particular region's language okay okay so assume that you went to China okay so here you'll be speaking your own language like English or Telugu or Hindi okay so you will be searching for a translator and he'll be converting that language into the Chinese language okay okay so in that way so this is nothing but the translator job right so the same definition in terms of programming languages is nothing but the translator guys so the translator reads the source program return in one language and translates it into an equivalent program that is written in another language guys so basically here we are not defining one is higher level or other is lower level we are just saying from one language to another language is nothing but the our translator so from source He'll be taking the translator will be taking as an input and he'll be giving the output is nothing but translator. Sorry, target code or target language. Okay. 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 So now let us go through compiler. Okay. So basically by adding some restrictions to the translator, we'll be achieving the compiler guys. Okay. Okay. So basically a compiler is a computer program. Okay. So it is nothing but a program which helps you transform the source code which is a return in higher level language guys this is really important into lower level machine language so basically you will be converting a language from higher level to lower level so this process or this method with the help of a particular program will be doing guys. so that program is nothing but the compiler okay okay so for simple understanding we can say c or c plus plus to machine code so machine code is a lower lower level language right yes Okay, so if you take a small block diagram, you'll be taking an, an input, target code or machine code will be the output and there might be some error messages can also be displayed. Okay, yes. Okay, so now let us go through some characteristics or features of a compiler. So basically, when can you say that a compiler is good? So these are the things that it should be there. So it should be correctness. So basically whatever you gave as an input. So basically assume that you wrote a code for adding of two numbers. Okay. So you wrote a code for adding of two numbers. So basically you converted this into machine code. Now the machine code should also do the same operation. Only then you can say that the code is properly translated from one language to another language. So that is nothing but the correctness. Similarly code of comp sorry, sorry speed of compilation so basically this conversion should also be fast yes similarly prevention the preserve the correct meaning of the code yes that's what we have discussed in correctness the speed of the target code so basically if the target code is generated even that should be executed or it can be run faster right yes and recognizing the legal and illegal program constructs and good error reporting handling so basically error reporting handling also should be there properly okay okay so now let us go through types of compilers guys so basically there are three different types guys yes the first one is nothing but single pass two pass and multiple pass guys okay so from the names only you can clearly say guys so basically we will we are having some phases of compiler guys which we'll be discussing in our future lectures don't worry about that okay so for now we'll be assuming those are all phases as only a single compiler guys so basically inside this compiler you'll be having multiple layers okay okay so single pass compiler so here source code is a directly translated from machine sorry source code is directly translated into machine code in a single step or a single pass you can say okay so source code will be given as an input the compiler will be taking it as an input and it will be outputting the target code or a machine code you can say okay okay so this is a single pass so basically it is having only a single medium in between okay similarly two pass compiler so basically here we will be dividing the into two different phases that is nothing but front end and the back end so front end it maps the legal code into intermediate presentation so basically the diagram will be in this way guys so basically you will be giving your source code and the front end with the help of the front end you will be converting it into intermediate code guys okay and now this intermediate code will be passed to the back end and now this back end will be giving you the output as a target code or the machine code so these first phase and second phase hence this is called as a two pass compiler guys 
Okay, sorry, I it told I think I told I face, but please consider it as fast pass, guys. Okay, so two passes, the first pass and the second pass. Okay, yes, the back end is nothing but it converts from IR to target machine code. Okay, similarly multi pass. So from the name only you can say now. Okay, so there will be multiple layers. We can say yes, yes, that's correct. The multi pass compiler processes the source code or syntax tree of the program several times. So multiple times it can do guys. Okay. Okay, so it divides a large program into multiple small programs and processes them. It develops a multiple intermediate codes. <clears throat> Sorry for that. Multiple intermediate codes are requirement of less memory. So basically here you will be creating multiple intermediate codes. So basically you are finally getting some some part of the code only. You are not you. There is no need for you to have a huge memory space and everything, right? Okay. So in this way, so you can just draw the diagram in this way, front end, middle end, and the back end. So in, input will be a source code. Intermediate codes you'll be getting twice and in the machine code. So even you can add multiple layers also guys. Okay. Okay. So I hope everyone got some basic idea about About the translator and the compiler, right? And we also discussed about the types of compiler. So in the next lecture, we'll be going through some other topics or programs related to compiler like interpreter assembler. These are some popular words which we get confused commonly, right? So we'll be discussing about them in the next lecture guys. Okay. So I hope everyone got a clear idea. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.